So back on the $200 Kawasaki Bayou, uh, finally got some space cleared out in the garage to roll it in so I'm not as limited by the rain now. So the last time I managed to get it running and riding just good enough to take it around the block but it still had a lot of issues. So now that we know that it will run and ride, we're working on getting uh, some of the uh, problems that it has sorted out so that it can actually be ridden out on the trails. And the first thing I'm going to focus on is these rear bearings because as I mentioned before they are very bad flopping all over the place and this one is so bad that the seal has also gone out and it's dumping gear oil all over the place so I want to get that taken care of before I take it out on the trails so that I don't run out of gear oil or get water in the diff or whatever. I've actually had this hub off before, which is why the nut's loose and the washer's missing. Do I need to check some things? Yeah, that looks nice. All crusty. The rubber seal is, of course, dry as a bone. And the brake system is 100% seized up. The arm doesn't even move. So we're going to need to take that whole assembly off though to get to the bearings. Okay, so there is the bearing retainer in the hub retainer. Pop off. We're just going to take this whole thing off because it's so dirty. Brake pads are getting replaced. The brake actuating arm has to be unseized. And this whole thing needs to be cleaned up. So I'm just going to take the whole thing off. So on these ATVs, the axle shafts are actually retained by the bearings themselves. The bearings are pressed in and then the axle has a step on it that's on the other side of this bearing. So you can see the uh, that step hits the bearing and the bearings pressed into the uh, axle tube so the axle shaft can't come out now from what I've seen the way most people get these apart is they actually take the axle tubes off of the differential uh, to get the axle shafts out and then pound the bearing out from the other side but as you can see that would require a lot of disassembly and things are rusty and I simply do not want to do that so I'm going to try something different so I got these washers here, and I've also got the hub nut. And I have a slide hammer. So what I'm going to try is, since there's a step on that axle shaft, and the only thing holding the axle shaft in is the bearing, I'm going to put a slide hammer on these washers, which will pull on the axle shaft, which should pull the bearing out of the axle tube without me having to disassemble the entire suspension. And there's our bearing. And there's some more of that muddy gear lube. It's going to take a few flushes to get it out of there. But look at that bearing. Look at it, it's just flopping all over the place. It's no good. And then the seal is behind it. We'll get the seal puller out. It's a little tricky. And there's our seal. Uh, there's not a whole lot of space to get the puller on the seal, so it was a little tricky getting out of there, but it's out. So what we gotta do now is just clean all this up and pound our new bearing in. Okay, so everything's cleaned up. Now I actually found uh, this little collar which goes on the end of the axle shaft like that. So that will not fit in after the seal is in. So I'm just going to set it in there, standing up, so that I will be able to get the, the axle shaft through it later. It's actually not hard to get the axle shaft through that collar when it's just sitting in there. 
So we're going to take our seal, place it in there. Get that as straight as possible. Just use a socket, rubber mallet. Seat it. Okay, that's seated. Just a little bit of grease on the seal to help it seal so it's not running dry when we first start turning it. We're also going to have to flush the dip after this. So now the axle shaft get through the collar and I got it on there. So then I'll slide all the way in like so. Now we have our bearing. That's going to slide on to right about there. So for the driver, I had to custom make my own driver. I did have a socket that was the right size, but it was simply not long enough to clear this shaft. So I had to make one. It's just a piece of tube with the old bearing welded to it. Get that on there. This being so long, it's a little hard to hold. All right, and our new bearing is in. So now we'll take care of the other side and then we'll do the brakes. See this one, it's the one that's leaking gear oil. So instead of being dry, it's all gooey and grimy. So everything on the other backing plate was nice and free because it was constantly covered in gear oil, but this one was completely dried, so the brake mechanism is completely seized solid. So I'm going to try to get that freed up. Mark it so I get it back in the right spot. Yeah, that was pretty well seized. I'm gonna get this all cleaned up and re-lubed and it should be good to go.
So I got everything back together now. Now believe it or not, the rear tires are actually only held on with two lug nuts per side right now. And it's not because I was lazy and didn't put the rest on, it's because that's all there is. Some of them were missing when I got it, plus the previous owner had just thrown some random fittings and nuts on there to try to hold the wheels on. And once I got rid of all those, all that's left is two lug nuts per side. So I'll need to get some more lug nuts at some point. Uh, I also might need to replace two of the studs on that side in the future because the threads are in pretty bad shape. But thanks to our new wheel bearings, the wheels are now nice and solid. They aren't flopping up and down like they were before. I did decide to go ahead and put in some cheap brake pads so I can have rear brakes. Now this side I had all the hardware to reattach everything, but this side I didn't have any hardware. Luckily. I was able to find the exact hardware I needed in my parts stash, so that worked out well. And I got it all adjusted, so now our brakes work. You can spin these, hit the pedal, and they stop. I will definitely need to flush that, that differential again. I already needed to do it before, but even more so now, because in addition to the mud and the fact that it's probably low at this point, it also probably has some brake cleaner in there from when I cleaned out the axle tubes. Now, if you're wondering why the brakes look so different from side to side, there's actually a very simple explanation for that. Whenever you have drum brakes on an ATV like this, they're typically sealed, and they are on this one as well. And they'll need a vent. So here's where the vent is, but you notice that the hose is rotted off, and it's like that on both sides, which means that it's completely open to the elements right there. That and the fact that the seals on the drums probably weren't actually doing much of anything since they were flopping around so badly from the bearings. So every time the previous owner rode this thing through water, which seems like it was fairly often from all of the dirt and buildup all over it, it would get water inside the brakes. 
Now that one fared pretty well because all the brake parts were constantly covered in gear oil from that leak so they didn't rust up or anything but this side didn't have a leak in the gear oil so it didn't have any protection on the parts from that happening so what happened is the muddy water got in and just coated absolutely everything clogged everything up made a big mess and allowed all the parts to rust pretty badly in there but luckily we were able to get it all cleaned up so everything should be fine now the next thing i'm going to start working on is the wiring and just sorting out this huge rat's nest Luckily, it's not all that bad. It seems like most of the issues are either just, you know, uh, wires that have been, that have had the insulation cut off or stuff like these where it's lousy splices. Um, and then this solenoid, of course. Other than that, there doesn't seem to be much going on with the wiring that uh, can't easily be sorted out. It's basically just cleaning up a bunch of stuff left over from the previous owner but it is going to be quite tedious so i'll just come back when i'm done with that